Hey everyone, today we're going to be running the game Warframe on the Apple Silicon Mac. So there is no Mac port of the game, despite the fact that there is an iPhone port. If you wanted to play this locally on the Apple Silicon Mac, for example, an M1, M2, M3 or M4 chipset, then you're going to have to be running the Windows version of the game. And we're going to be using a translation layer called Crossover. We'll also be patching Crossover using a third party tool called CX Patcher in order to get the latest version of D3D Metal from Apple's game porting toolkit. This will allow the game to run as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware. So today I'm going to show you the full process of how to go ahead and do this, how to install Crossover, how to apply the patcher, how to install what's called the Warframe cross tie, how to download the launcher, install the game and then set up the graphics and get connected. So the first step is going to be to download Crossover. So what I recommend doing is clicking at the link at the top of this video's description. Every single purchase that's made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. Once you're taken to the purchase page, you'll be able to enter this promo code Apple Gaming Wiki New. And once you press the arrow button here, it's going to go ahead and apply a 20% off discount, which is pretty huge, off Crossover Plus, which is the version that we recommend for 12 months of support. However, if you want to make sure that this works for you, make sure to check out the 14 day free trial, which is what I'm going to be trialing today. Just click this try now button and then scroll down. And all we need to do is enter our email address and name and then click the download trial now button. So once Crossover is downloaded, we're going to copy it over to our applications folder and then we're going to double click to open it for the first time. Press open. It might ask you to install Rosetta 2, just let that install. And then we're going to do the free trial or if you have unlocked this already, you can enter your details here from the Codeweavers account. So I'm going to try now to start the 14 day free trial. And basically we're ready to go ahead and use Crossover. But the first thing I'm going to do is to quit out and we're going to make the modifications to Crossover. This is an optional step that will allow us to use the latest version of D3D Metal. At the time of recording, that's version 2.0 beta 3. So here we're going to be downloading the latest version of CX Patcher, which I'll be leaving a link in the description. And we're going to be using 0.5.6. And this contains the latest update to Game Porting Toolkit 2.0, which is D3D Metal 2.0 beta 3. So here, what we're going to do is go to Assets and then download the cxpatcher.app.zip and then put this in our downloads folder. And once that's there, we're going to go to Finder and then go to Downloads. And then we'll go to CX Patcher, double click to extract this. And then we're going to move this into our applications folder. We are going to make sure that we open up Crossover first before we start this process and then close it. And then we're going to double click on CX Patcher. If it says it can't be opened, then go to the settings menu here, go to system settings, and then go to security and privacy, and then scroll down until we find here, it says CX Patcher can't be opened. It was blocked to protect your Mac. Click open anyway. And here we can close this and press open anyway. Then we're going to type in our password and then log in. That's okay. And this will basically allow us to open up applications which aren't from the App Store, type in your password, press OK. So just be aware that, of course, this is not a supported method of patching crossover. This really comes at your own risk. Do not ask Code Weavers for support or refund if you're using this method. They will not be able to help you. If you need help from Code Weavers, then you should be waiting for official support, which is probably going to come in the very near future. If you want to be able to use this, you need to type in this full phrase and then press agree and proceed. Now CX Patch is ready to use. So we're going to configure some settings first, go to advanced options, and then we're going to be enabling DXVK integrate GPTK. We're going to use a separate bottle path. We're going to be advertising AVX. We're going to be allowing DXVK async, and then we can tweak some of these settings too. So now we're going to drag and drop crossover into CX Patcher. Now CX Patcher is ready to go. So double click on Crossover. So I already have a couple of launchers installed here, including Battle.net and Steam. However, what I want to do is to click the install button here, and then we're going to do a search for the Warframe standalone installer. So Warframe is a lot easier to install via the standalone launcher rather than going through Steam, I found, because that's a little bit buggy. So what I'm going to do is locate the Warframe launcher. What I'm going to do is do a search for Warframe installer, and then go to warframe.com forward slash download. I want to download the individual Warframe installer itself. Click here, download for Windows, and click allow. And this is downloading the warframe.msi. So this is the installer file which Crossover needs in order to continue to the next step. And then we're going to click install. And now we're going to select warframe.msi, which we just downloaded. Click choose installer. And then it's going to create the Warframe bottle and then start up the installation process. So now the download has started up and it's asking us to select a folder. What I'm going to do is press cancel so that I can have the bottle completed. Click abort process and quit. And uh, I want the bottle to finish here. And then what I'm going to do is turn on msync here, reboot bottle and enable msync. And then this gives us the opportunity to control click on the Warframe bottle, open the C drive, and then we can basically create a new folder within the C drive. I'm going to call this one Warframe. And we're going to put the game data in there. 
So I'm going to relaunch the Warframe launcher. And here it's saying we're going to allow this to find devices on the network. And then it started up again. So now when we go to my computer, click allow, we go to C drive. We have this Warframe folder, which we're going to put my data into, press open. And now it's going to do its full update and download. So this uh, works a little bit better than the Steam version, I find. Uh, in the options menu here, you can also change the DirectX API, so 11 or 12. I think 11 is going to work better for performance. And make sure to set GPU preference to high performance here. And then what we're going to do is enable full screen. And basically, this is ready to wait until all of this data has fully downloaded. So you need to wait a bit of time before all of that completes. And then we can move on to the next step. So once Warframe has completely finished downloading, we're going to press the play button and then go ahead and launch the game properly. So it might flicker a little bit, but the window will pop up and then go into full screen mode. And then it's going to start connecting up to the server. After a few moments, you'll be met with the Warframe login. So just type in your email address and password for your account. And then make sure to tweak the graphics settings, especially the aspect ratio, and get this full screen. So here we're running at 1080p with FSR2 set to quality mode at the high graphics preset. So here we're running on the ship at the moment. And basically, this is running pretty well on the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch with 48 gigabytes of RAM and 40 GPU cores. Here I'll just show you what in level gameplay actually looks and feels like. We're running at hundreds of frames per second and it seems very responsive and fluid. Anyway, that is how you go ahead and install Warframe, the Windows version of the game on the Apple Silicon Mac. This will work whether it's working on the M3 Max chip or on the M1 or the M4 four chips as well. The game is going to run pretty well on virtually every single Mac. It only uses about five or six gigabytes of memory, so even an eight gig machine should work fine as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other tutorial videos like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.